And once again, we're very excited to have Chef Hubert Keller work, cooking for us once more. And he's going to demonstrate, as advertised, the All Ohio Short Rib Burger. And a quick note to mention, everybody, is that all the beef that he's using is provided by our friends from Blues Creek Farm Meats right here in central Ohio. Chef Hubert, take it away. Thanks, Bill, again. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, I hope you can have a lot of fun on that segment. So it's true that I, I am a little bit in, in the burger business, too. As you know, I, I have the burger bars. There's one in uh, Las Vegas, San Francisco, and St. Louis. And when I was actually giving the name to Burger Bar, it was not about the burgers and the different garnishes and the salads and the toppings. It was burgers and booze, right? So drinking and burgers and beer. That's why you can see in the Ohio Burger, I have a lot of alcohol lined up. And everything's going to go in the burger. And I'm actually going to make it work. So... First of all, what we I'm just thought it was the set, but the combination of the honey, the beer, the gin, and the mead is a very attractive row, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's pretty amazing, especially when they all come together. It feels like it's a burger and a cocktail right there. But uh, what I'm doing actually to the burger is, um, is uh, first of all, I'm using some uh, ground beef, of course. And whenever you're doing a, a burger, I like to wet my hands a little bit. So that means the, the meat is not sticking on your hand. And I'm actually going to create one first uh, patty. And I think it's very important when you're actually doing a burger is not to overwork the meat, right? It's very important. What I also recommend when you actually uh, go to the butcher, and if you know your butcher, when it comes really to burgers and you're really into the burgers, maybe don't buy the ground meat. Just pick a piece of meat that you see, if it's chuck or, or if you want to go fancy, you can use a New York steak, but it's almost a shame. Uh, might as well use the ground, the chuck. And, but when you see it and it's fresh, just buy it and then tell the butcher to grind it for you. And then you mix it a little bit with your hands so the fat and the flesh is evenly mixed, so the fat are evenly distributed. That makes another great burger. But otherwise, I really recommend yeah, that actually you, you, or you actually grind it by hand, or if you're really a fanatic about burgers, you might want to spend the time, like when you make a steak tartare, you actually cut the burger by hand. So that's another thing. But that's just in case you're bored and you really want to do that at home, right? <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm doing here is mostly a burger. And there's a little surprise in my burger. What I did actually, and the reason why I have some beer here, I actually used some short ribs. And I actually braise the short ribs very slowly for about like four to four and a half hours, very slowly in the beer and coriander seeds and some carrots, onions, garlic, thyme. And then when the short ribs are really nice and tender, I basically take it off from the bone, of course, and then I shred them really, really nicely. And then all the braising liquid, I really reduce it down to basically a glaze, like a total natural concentrate of, uh, of beef, of short ribs. And then I mix then my meat here with the juice, with a little bit of cilantro, a little bit of chives or parsley. And then here, what I'm actually doing, as you can see, I have two little patties, about a two and a half ounce to three ounce of patty. And here, what I have in my bowl is actually shredded short rib that I did really, I added that the braising liquid, the herbs, and if you want, you can put a little jalapeno pepper in there. I mean, if you want to spice it up, it's really up to you. You really can take off on that stage, but mostly I show you the idea. And what I'm doing, I'm putting that braised short rib in the center of my burger. And then, of course, I take the other patty, and you see I created a little cavity in the center, and I actually put it on top. I'm sealing the, the burger, as you can see, and I create a beautiful patty. And then what that is, it's actually a surprise. So all the juices, all the flavor are concentrating there. And if you're doing that to your, to your friends, maybe don't tell them in the beginning, just tell them it's a burger. And then once they start cutting or biting into it, I mean, you have so much flavor in there. So what I'm doing, I'm actually seasoning now with salt and pepper. And we're using, I still have some, uh, Fleur de sel here from uh, Chef Richard, and when he said it's a little bit more than sea salt, he was actually totally right. So, what I'm doing here now for, for like I said, we, we created the, for the special occasion the, the Ohio burger. So, I, what I really like to do and is to just take a cast iron, and I know there's a lots of good brands out there, fancy brands, but, and I'm not, not joking right now, I'm very serious about, I think when you take like the really American cast iron, which has not an animal uh, coating on it, that's what works the best, and it's probably the cheapest, right? So if I would sell cookware, I probably wouldn't recommend it, but since I'm not into selling cookware, 
I think that what really works, even if you're in a little apartment and then you don't have the gas and you don't have the resource, you put that on an electric little burner, just let it sit there for 20 minutes. It's gonna be so hot that you can sear the best piece of meat on it. Over here, I have one that already has been sealed a little bit just to get it going. And once I have those elements ready, so let me show you how we're actually putting that burger together. But again, remember it's really a great burger loaded with flavors and you don't have to cook it all the way through because remember the center of the burger is already cooked. The meat is already cooked. So you only want to warm up that meat and then of course you can still have that burger which is nice and juicy. And then here what I like to, to serve with that burger of course is actually on a bretzel bun. I think bretzel is also it reminds me back home, Alsace, where we really have a beer and a bretzel, right? That's typical from the little part of France. And, um, and I really love to combine that with a burger. So also a very little trick, you can see the, the sear that I'm giving to that burger. And I think very often the mistake that I can see very often is you put a burger down and we're basically thinking, well, it was not that expensive of meat, so you don't treat it like a great New York steak that you pay a fortune or like a ribeye or something. And you put a weight on it, so it really goes faster. And then you're squeezing every single juice who was in there and flavor. And we still do that kind of a mistake just to, why do we squeeze that bird on the griddle? It's just to, to get it faster done, right? And I think that's a mistake. And I, I promise you, if next time you do a burger, make sure don't make it this thin and give them that nice uh, sear so all the juices stay inside. Let it rest a little bit and then put it in the bun and then all the juices are inside. So that's a little trick there. So once we have uh, the burger going, now comes the time we just gonna mount the burger. So like I said, I have a little toasted, a little toaster bretzel bun. And very quickly, we're gonna put uh, the burger on here. You don't know how patiently I've been waiting for this. All right. <laughs> here is our burger. I put a nice slice of a tomato on top of it. And here, when, when you saw actually about the meat, I actually cured some uh, onions. So we have a little cracking in it. And so I cured a little bit of uh, onions. I said meat, it's, it's actually onions. So I cured that. And what's, it's very easy, right, when you're curing these onions, you just let that cook very slowly for about uh, 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, and you let it sit. But it's really so much better when you do your own uh, pickles, right? So I have that. And then to really stay in Ohio, I have some beautiful fresh goat cheese, which instead of using mayonnaise, I think that's so creamy and so tasty that what I will do, you see, I just put one nice dollop just right on top. So that's a pretty good looking burger right oh. there. And of course, I'm serving a little bit of a fennel and radish salad just to be different and to make it really even more exciting. I'm actually adding a little bit gin in my salad. So there's so little in there that even if you have kids around, like Don't I said. we always add gin to our salads? Sure. <laughs> yeah, when why not? <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of fennel. And as you can see, the little red spots in there, it's actually a little radishes who come in there. All right, I'm and then, oh, my red. And then I here am. we have, mm. we have a wonderful Ohio burger. Look at this, I'm, I'm gonna try a little bit of this fennel seed. All right, thank you. Mm. Wow. That is so delicious, so beautifully balanced, and I can't wait to dig into that burger. Thank you, Chef Hubert Keller. It's been an absolute pleasure. Let's give him a big round of applause, everybody. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure.